So today I'm hanging out with one of my hard money lenders and he called me up and he said, Chris, you think your audience might want to see exactly what I'm looking for before I loan you the money to buy the house? All right, Roundup family, it's your boy, Chris Haskins with TheRealEstateRoundup.com. You know my mission, my ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. I'm going to be bringing you in, teaching with you today, not at you, taking you on site to meet one of my hard money lenders, uh, Mike, and he wanted to share with you what, it, what is he looking for when he goes out? What does he want you to bring to him in order for him to loan you the money? Let's talk about first, what is a hard money lender? What is a hard money lender? Well, I'm glad you asked. So a hard money lender is somebody basically that loans you the money based on the asset based on the asset that's based on the house that he's loaning the money to or loaning the money on and not necessarily on the ability of the borrower to pay it back so he, he doesn't really care about whether you're going to have the income to pay it back he wants to make sure that if you default so you don't pay what pay what you owe he can take that house back and make his money back all right that's basically what hard money guys looking for He's going to look at your property and have a second eyes opinion on whether it's a good deal or not. So that's why I encourage new investors to use, use hard money. There is no credit check. He doesn't care about your credit, typically speak, generally speaking. Uh, they, they, they're, not, they're not concerned about you refinancing them later on down the line because generally speaking, once again, you're going to sell the house once you fix it up. And you must have an LLC or some type of corporation. They typically do not loan money to human beings they loan money to entities so if you don't have your LLC set up make sure you go out there and get that you need to have one anyway oh you're not gonna be able to borrow money from a hard money lender if you don't and you must typically have a down payment down payment generally runs from 10 to 20 percent depending on the deal Mike's gonna talk about like he loans money to me he may not charge me a down payment at all that's because of my track record and the history that I have in the business so if you're experienced, you might get favorable terms with a hard money lender. As opposed to being a newbie, they're going to make sure that you bring, you're bring bringing some skin in the game. So let's go to the property. We're going to meet Mike there with another rehabber. This guy's sharp. He's going to show you some drawings. And Mike's going to show us exactly what he's looking for and before he actually decides to loan you the money to flip your next house. All right, let's go. Round up family, what's going down? What's going down? Hanging out with Mike Crumbine. What up? Hey, thanks give me for. A pound, man. Oh, I gotta give you a pound. I'm glad you, you came by to look at this project over here on uh, Fox Hill Road. Yes. Uh, Fox Hill Road's a busy road, and they're repaving it right now. So if, you, if Chris let you take a look at it, it's uh, it's pretty nasty. But when it's repaved, it's going to be real nice. They've yes. Read the sidewalks, which is great. The city's taking care of the neighborhood, and that's a good thing. Yep. You know, I will discount this in my, you know, my valuation just because it is a busier road than say you go one block over or over that way and into back into the subdivision. But this is still going to be a nice, a nice house once it's done. A good place to live. Nice schools down the road. Yep. What we didn't tell you is Mike is a lender. Roundup family. I am trying to pour into you I want to pour into you so today the purpose for this video is so we can pick Mike's brain while we're walking through this property you can know exactly what a hard money lender is looking for and he just told you one thing what are some other things that you're observing while you're here Mike oh well I got Mike for Gary to show up so we can get inside I happen to know him uh, for many years and so I have a lot of confidence in him. Okay. And and that's a real important. And but I start when I start with people, a lot of times they've never done a single deal. Uh huh. But you know I, I understand how to look at a deal, how to value it, and uh, I like to get them started. And I'm, I may not give them the best deal in terms of down payment that that say I'd give Gary, but uh, almost a nothing down type situation. But you know that's because could, of the relationship. Yeah, it's my relationship. We've done deals together. Once gotcha. you give me. Get, you know, work up to a level of confidence after one or two deals. I know you can bring a project in on budget, on yeah. time. I can give you, I can do all kinds of things for you, with you, okay. and uh, it just makes it a lot easier. The key thing Mike is telling you, Roundup family, is getting it done. Getting the house done. I'm going to read Mike's brain and ask I, him, do you want to hear an excuse if the house is not done to completion? <laughs> 
they, they can't be, there are no excuses. You know, that clock is ticking, the money's ticking, that interest is ticking. You know, you're probably making monthly payments, so you paid them already, you paid them up front maybe. Or you're getting to a deadline where you're gonna have to make more money payments. And you don't wanna, you don't wanna go down that route. No. And that's why you gotta interview and know your contractors really well. You gotta know that they're gonna perform. You gotta go look at their projects. You gotta get some references. Nice. You know, all the really good contractors are really busy. I think that's good. And so, you know, make sure you, just because they talk nice, they seem nice. I, I just can't tell you any horror stories. Chris should make a horror video of bad contractors. Oh, good. It would be great. And I probably, I'll help you. I'll find some bad contractors. <laughs> some of, unfortunately, some of my bars have had them. And it's, it's just horrible. <laughs> Mike, for people that don't quite understand, what should they look for when hiring a contractor? Uh, we'll go up here a little, maybe less noise. Okay. How about the noise, Mike? Will that be a factor on this deal for you? Let's, let's go ahead and talk about that. Well, you know, a little, just the busyness of it. It's not that noisy when you get off the street, even, uh, you know, 10, 20 feet. Yeah. Once you're inside the house, I don't think it's going to bother you. Okay. Backyard's probably okay. Nice. You know, this is a, this is a decent neighborhood. Okay. So, uh, it's a good place. I like it. So, what for people that are hiring contractors, Mike? I mean, uh, just give them a few tips on what they should do. No doubt we've seen a lot. Okay. You know, you just can't take their word that they're a good contractor and they're going to be on time. So, I would go and look at some of the jobs they're currently doing and talk to the people they did them for and find out did they bring references. it in on yeah did they bring it in on budget now they're obviously not going to give you the bad references but you still you want to see that they got some good ones uh, how many deals are they working on right now you know are they oh they stretched you know are they trying to line you up to get to you down the road in four months when you need it done this month um, do they really know how to do the work? Who are their subcontractors? Are they going to bring in a plumber? Who's that plumber? Oh. And is that plumber reliable? I can tell you, my, my daughter just went through a horrible situation, dealt with a very big contractor, and he brought in a plumber that was absolutely worthless. Wow. And uh, caused a lien, you know, a lien on the building. He wasn't paying oh, his suppliers. My goodness. You know, you really have to check after some of these people. She does much bigger projects, and uh, so that probably won't happen on a small project. But you gotta check up on everybody. When someone wants to do a job and they see a vision of a house, Mike, and they come to you and they say, Mr. Hard Money Lender, this is a great deal. We're gonna make money on it. And they want you to finance the whole thing. Yeah. What is your first, what are you thinking? What well, are you thinking? First time I look at, at the numbers, you know, are they buying at the right price? I'm gonna do a desktop uh, evaluation, see if they, they're buying it right in, for that neighborhood. And then I'm gonna look at their rehab budget. And I'm gonna add the two together and see if that makes sense. You know, Is there a profit to be had in there? Um, you need to be basically at 70% of the after repair value. You purchase plus your rehab, you add them together, and that should be no more, maybe a little bit more, 75%, but at least 70%, we're gonna lend up to That's your gross profit, that 25, 30% between what you got in the project and what you're gonna be able to sell it. And you gotta take out all your interest, your commissions, any uh, closing costs, whatever. Uh, and that's how you know you got a good deal. And that's and that's a benefit of using us. We're gonna be looking at over your shoulder. Second eyes. Set of second eyes to be able to tell you, yeah, this is gonna work. Or right. no, it ain't gonna, gonna work. work. You know, you don't want to go into a deal that just is not going to work. And you're comfortable saying no. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, we have to say no. We're never going to go above that 70%. If you want to take that risk on yourself, well, you got to put more money down. We will, for people we have confidence in, we will lend 100% of the deal. But um, you got to build up that confidence. You just can't walk in the door. Or you, you have to have a track record. Maybe you, with another lender and you want to get away from them for whatever reason, uh, show us your track record, we happy to do that. So we do these fix and flips and we do new construction. Nice. And once we sort of get to know each other well, one of the things that the benefit of us is we have money for all kinds of oddball situations. 
and uh, I love those and they're just fun to try to make work and uh, uh, when we get some time maybe uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little presentation with uh, yeah. with you about all the oddball situations and how we did this Monday we gotta get you on it this Monday last uh, question go ahead yeah good no, that was it that uh, I wanted to ask you so basically what I'm hearing you say you want the borrower to believe in their vision and their dream Sure. Just as much as you would believe it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Because I know people come to me, they say, I got this deal, like, you want me to put up all the money? And I'm like, well, you don't believe in yourself, why would I believe in you? Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> well, I believe in them, it just, but they got to prove it in the beginning. Well, I mean, you know. Believing and proving is right. like they <laughs> right, 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 right. All right. Gary here is, it is yeah. an expert rehabber. I mean, you can't believe what Gary can do to a horrible layout of a space. Okay. He can. He just has this. Some people have vision and skill at doing that kind of remodel work, and he is a he pro at it. He, he can do. It. He can see it. I can. Nice. nice. Know, so he's going to show me today what he's going to do on this project, right? right. Okay. Yeah. That's why we're here. Right. This is the re rehabber right here. He's round up family. Yeah. Gary. He bought right. it. He bought the house, and he's going to rehab it, and I'm going to fund it for him. Nice. The, uh, so uh, anyway, we're talking about impact of uh, a busy street, how to overcome that. Okay. Uh, what I had thought was you know, getting in and out here is a royal pain. That's going to be really disruptive for anybody that's trying to buy the house, let alone the traffic. But the price point uh, is soft enough so it will attract more people. Uh, what is it, that. 130s? Uh, well, I think I'm going to try to get 150. 150, okay. Yeah, so. Portable um, house. Uh, right. So uh, what I'm planning on doing is we use that apron there, and then we're basically going to do a horseshoe driveway and come out and cut another apron in here, Smart. so they can come in either way. Smart. And then it'll all be concrete, you know, basically up, you know, really just be a massive concrete thing. And then your grass will just be here and kind of create some landscaping, give it a little yeah. bit of height. So it'll be easy in and out for them. Right. That's the downside to these busy streets. I mean, this one particularly. And the only reason I know that is, is that. Yeah, I almost got killed trying to get out of here, and I said, this is not going to work. <laughs> so, I had to fix that. So, uh, That's so smart, Gary. That's the first thing out of your mind when you come to the exterior first. you got to get into the damn house first. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so that's how I'm overcoming. Thanks. I'm glad you did that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel better already. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just... Todd and I were just talking about, Smitty and I were just talking about backing out. You don't want to back out into this street, I promise you. Next year we're getting an all new roof, all new siding, all new windows. Uh, in fact, next week we're coming in, we're tearing all the siding on, uh, starting with that. Okay. And then we'll, that, that will expose all the rotten framing, so we'll be able to address that. Okay. You break them. This is just normal wear and tear of rot. Don't need a key. <laughs> This is the new keyless entry system <laughs> yeah. that uh, Chris Haskin is now introducing to the uh, marketplace. <laughs> on, the, on your shelf soon. We're coming to a store near you. Get a picture of this. Oh, and Jesus. Oh, and Jesus. Keyless entry. Yeah. Let him come on in. See what you're going to do. Yes, man. Mics! Free mics! Yeah, you see how far that, that entrance goes back over that way. You doing something here? Here you want to cover? Well, uh, I, I tell you what we'll, we'll talk about is, uh, you know, whenever I look at these houses, uh, for me to really kind of get a better understanding of how to capitalize on its potential uh, is to get it on a drawing so I can look over top of it and I can play with the layout that way. Nice. That way, uh, so I have some architectural engineering background, so okay. I, I usually just come in, measure up, and that's when I make my discoveries. And so I came up with a pretty cool idea on this particular house. So it is small. What is it like 972? Yeah, yeah, something like that. But the thing that struck me is this house is so small, but it's this huge living room. And I thought, what difference would it make if it was missing five feet? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, a two-bedroom or is it? It's a three-bedroom right now. Okay. Wow. Okay. But it's it's really kind of a two and a half. Mm -hmm. So um, when I when, when I put it on the drawing, I was able to see the opportunity. So um, right off the bat, I saw that this living room is a really big. So I'm going to extend. I'm basically just going to build a partition <coughs> right here and go that way and create a master suite bath. Too short. 
right? Window is already here, so since we're tearing the siding all off, I can make the window a little bit smaller, more appropriate for uh, a, a full bath. I like that. So, uh, and here we'll open up all that wall right there, make this whole That's area the here. Yeah, the other end in with the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Move that door going into the kitchen right here, and then make this put the sink here, and uh, so the cabinets will be here, and then the range and all that the cabinets over here. So it'd be, you know, so kind of almost a galley in you know, a type of kitchen. So your door's in the middle of the here? The door's gonna be in the middle. Gotcha. Okay. Well, you're creating, move by moving the doors, you're creating an opportunity to put cabinets here? Yes. Good yeah. idea. So you get more cabinets, more space, Knocking this wall out here is that this is going to be kind of a you know eat in garage gotcha. area, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing, like that. Cool. Right. Okay. Um, what you didn't notice in that laundry room right there is that that laundry room extends beyond this wall. Oh, okay. Okay. So that gave me the opportunity. So right here we've got hot water here, and then we've got a furnace, all of which are you know junk. Okay. But you can see how I chopped up this bedroom here. So this is not really a bedroom. Oh. Here, come on in. You can kind of see around here. So this is the hot oh. water here and that furnace is. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that furnace and put it up in the attic. Mm -hmm. Take the hot water here, put it over in that laundry room. That gives me all this, and that makes this a real bedroom. And then I'm going to cut the closet in right in here into that um, that uh, mudroom or laundry room back so over there. So they will give it a sharp right yeah. there. And then down here, I have this renovated this bathroom. Good. Just put all the new furniture uh, fixtures in there. Yeah. You know, nice vanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a nice size bathroom room. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a bath. Do you take windows out of the yes. shower here? Yeah. Well, I don't take them out. Uh, sometimes I will and sometimes I won't, depending okay. on. Uh, when you have a shower and a, and a window, um, it just adds cost. So on this particular house, I'll probably take that window out and just put an exhaust fan in there. There you go. Because uh, it will simplify their job. Let's show uh, people who look at the video this, this, this set of plans. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, orient you. So, where's is this front, front, yeah, front that's door the front here? Door. So, this is the front door where the, the living room and leading into the kitchen is sort of this great room, I call it. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, we're over here in this bedroom. Yep. He's going to use this wall and, and, and make nice closet over here and over here. And then, but he's going to have a walk-in uh, bathroom, so it's a master bath. Right. Like by taking fi that five feet right. from the from the uh, from the living room. Right. And see, I put the vanity up against the window here, yeah. so I didn't have to fight it with the tub. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Now, you have a preference with the tub as opposed to a stand-up shower, Gary? Um, sometimes I go, but th this price point, uh, you know, usually uh, I'll go with the tub just because gotcha. it's easier. Right. Cool. Okay. okay. Right. And uh, you know, and then here you see I relocated that hot right, right here, right. there, and then that's where I captured that little closet. Oh, you're not. I thought we were going all the way in here. We're going to go to half of that. Right. Yeah, that's because right. I need washer and dryer space, and then I also need uh, that hot yes, water, water, water heater yeah. space. So you know, he spent a little time and money uh, putting this plan together, but it's really going to help his uh, his uh, you know labor contractors. Uh, See the vision. They got a set of plans they can go by, and uh, so you know you're, you. He can do this himself, but there's no reason you can't go out and hire a draftsman. Probably just for really what a few hundred dollars, five hundred bucks, maybe. Oh yeah, a draftsman yeah, would, yeah. Would, do, would do this for you, and that turns your you know gives you control over your project, and it's worth doing. Yeah, I mean definitely. Yeah, and then you can also do better material takeoff uh, down when you take it into to blues. Well, I, I use uh, like a, it, it's called an assembly uh, CAD software. You still do, you know. Uh, it's okay. a chief architect, so. That's right, well you're an architect already by background. Not an architect, but I've, I, I've taken classes and drafting classes and stuff, so. Um, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm the type of person that, what is it that uh, um, uh, Mark Twain used to say? Uh, Don't let school interfere with your education. <laughs> <laughs>
that is nice. Now I took drafting. I was in the engineering school, took drafting. Right. And when I this was back before electric, you know, you right. raced everything. Yeah, we had it. I was you know, I'm, and, I'm right there with you. And, and when I turned my projects in, it looked like somebody had walked on top of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't do too well in that class. <laughs> and so I decided it wasn't for me. Well, they, so, the AutoCAD really makes it nice because uh, you, you'll discover discrepancies right away because it won't lock in. In other words, if you pull the outside dimensions and then you pull the inside, it all has to lock or it won't work. Wow. And you'll find, I've actually found hidden staircases in properties before. Wow. Um, and that changed cool. the whole dynamics of the layout. I mean, if you find three feet by 15 feet in a kitchen, mm -hmm. I mean, in kitchens, inches mean everything. Yes. And that was that, that's that Bar Street property. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, that's what, what that will do for me. All right. Great. Sounds good. Okay, so, uh, Garrett, you can, you can just tell people, you know, what it's going to cost to, to do this. This is a pretty big project because you're doing everything. Right, right. Typically on projects like this, I figure I calculate about fifty bucks a square foot. So uh, that would be close to fifty thousand, you know, for this new heating and cooling, new electric, all new electric wiring. Uh, I'm going in with that in mind. Uh, I'm seeing that uh, it's got the grounded outlet, so and they've got a new two hundred amp service. I may not have to spend that much, so uh, it, it, will, it won't be less than thirty five bucks a square foot. I know that for a fact, uh, but usually I go in. I think it's a big, yeah. a big, a big project. Yeah. 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 And usually anywhere from 1,500 square feet to 1,000, uh, it's about 50 bucks a square foot. Nice. Good to know. Okay, so now you know exactly what a hard money lender is looking for the next time you want to get a loan to buy your next house. You might want to take in consideration of what Mike was talking about. Please subscribe to my channel, Roundup Family. Like the content if you liked it. Share this with any other investors that are looking to get into the real estate business. And comment. Tell me what you look for when you go to look for your next flip. I know what I'm looking for. I know exactly the criteria, the type of the feel that I like. But I want to know what do you look for when you're considering buying your next flip. It's very important to me and some of this content I can share with my audience as well. This is Chris Haskins with the realestateroundup.com and I'll see you next time, Roundup family. Peace.